Welcome to the Wackadoodle News, broadcasting high above the glistening Sklebangi building. I'm your host, Marty D'Angelo, so welcome to the show. Hey guys, Marty D'Angelo. It's Friday, June 7th, 2019. We have a lot going on for you today, including a link to download the Board of Consultants Independent Review of the Oroville Dam, which has a lot of questions raised. Here's a snippet. One the Bach noted during the shoot inspection that, as anticipated, many of the hairline cracks originally observed on the surface of the shoot slabs were healed by the natural action of the cement in the concrete. This behavior is expected to continue with time. Nevertheless, the Bach reiterates its recommendation to apply a crystalline type waterproofing system to the surface of the spillway slabs according to the manufacturer's directions provided it can be applied without adversely impacting the existing smooth surface finish of the slabs. To the Bach observed all the threaded bolts protruding from the spillway walls that were used to mount the staff gauges on the inside face of the walls. See Figure 6. Although not intentional, these bolts provided an opportunity to monitor for cavitation damage since such a protrusion into the flow should initiate cavitation. All of the bolts at each staff gauge mounting location that were below the flow line of the recent FCO spillway release showed no evidence of cavitation damage. The Bach recommends that the bolts used to fasten the staff gauges to the inside face of the spillway walls be removed flush with the face of the wall, and that the staff gauges be replaced with the staff gauge information painted on the walls. 3. The Bach received a detailed briefing from the DWR during this Bach meeting regarding the field observations and significant events which took place during the first spill. This briefing included a summary of their findings. The Bach also walked and observed the entire length and width of the FCO chute in order to confirm the physical condition of the slabs, walls, joints and drainage systems. The Bach believes the spill event confirms their previous observations that the quality of the constructed spillway is superior. The slabs and walls are very smooth and the construction joints are intact. Have you guys ever noticed at night while watching the spillway cams that there's two modes that these cameras operate in depending on how much light they receive? They have a night mode and they have a day mode. And so, as you can see here, the spillway lights are visible, but as soon as the camera switches over and goes into day mode and the night mode goes off, you don't see those lights anymore. But those lights did not just get switched off. They're still on. You just can't see them because they're infrared. So why would they be using infrared lights on the spillway at night when you can't see it with your eye? Well, you can see it with other things, right? Well, that's a really good question. And we dug into that and we found out why they're using infrared light. And uh, I think you'll find it pretty interesting. But what is infrared light anyway? And what could its possible uses be for a dam? Did you know that what we see as red light is actually a wave of electromagnetic energy oscillating at a frequency of around 450 terahertz. Did I just blow your mind a little bit there? I'll give you a moment. It's true. In fact, all light consists of electromagnetic waves. But when those waves oscillate at a frequency lower than 400 terahertz or so, the human eye can no longer see them. But that doesn't mean we can't still put them to good use. In fact, there's a whole range of frequencies just below visible light that we use often in electronics. And we call that range infrared light. light. Yeah, but it's infrared, it's, it's not red. We can't see it, so it's, it's not red. So just kill that. Cool. You can't handle the truth! So it's very important that they do this work on the spillway at night because when you're injecting non-toxic chemicals into the water and you're trying to follow either the path of where water might be porting from or where uh, water coming through the spillway gates uh, is leaking or water underneath the spillway or whatever, but you have to do it at night because you have to be able to determine which water is which. Now there are some big pipes or hoses or they look like fire hoses 
hoses that go down to the spillway gates or down to that area down there. And you notice at night they're using those infrared lights out there, beaming them back and forth along the spillway walls there. And so you know they're looking for something, right? There are 14 chemicals that are luminescent in water or fluorescent in water. Uh, probably the most safest of all these would be mixing vinegar and vitamin B12. That would be safe for the fish and for uh, anybody downstream that might be using the water. And that's what I believe they're using. If you have a theory of what's going on, maybe you could get you a YouTube channel and you could tell the world about it. So this is actually a pretty safe practice. Now in this video, they're using a black light, which is ultraviolet light, which is at the opposite end of the spectrum of visible light at the high end and infrared is at the low end. But you know, there are chemicals that they can inject that they can see using infrared. It might not have anything to do with chemicals. They might just be high without the chemicals. I mean, so shy of going to work for the DWR or for Kiwit, um, the only way that I can get information is to buy it off people off of WikiLeaks, you know, just like everybody else, like all the rest of the honest Americans out there getting their truth on the back end. No, nah, I don't really have to buy the information. People are so willing to give it up, you know. I wish sex was that easy. That would be great. But, you know, hey, I'd rather have someone tell me the truth than bone my brains out and lie to me. So that's the way that goes. But back to the dam, you know, there's a lot of high-tech stuff they'd use nowadays to find leaks underneath concrete slabs. I mean, they use thermal imaging, which also works with the UV lights. You know, I don't know if you guys have thought about that, but thermal imaging is a big thing. A lot of times they use it to find a hot water leak, and but you could use it to find any kind of water leak because water's cold. <laughs> That's the way that works. They also have high-tech electronic water uh, finding devices now, and they also have hydrophones or something like that that you can listen and you can hear the water, and I know they've been using that on the spillway, not underneath it, but they're definitely listening for what's underneath it, okay? You gotta get that part straight. Yes, there is water running underneath the spillway. Shocking, right? And listening for water at night can be fun walking around underneath the IR lights in the darkness. We're approximately seven inches below the slab. So be sure to download the Board of Consultants review of the dam, the PDF. You can get the link right here in, a, in the description of this video and it's also available on our website. You know, we're seeing messages from people who are out there who are in FEMA camps from the campfire and it's scary. It's right above Oroville so they have everything in place, you know. And of course we don't trust the government. I found this comment originally posted on the chance and reposted by a Twitter account. I'm unable to copy and paste. I do not want to link to the Twitter. He's a patriot and they have taken too many of their accounts down already. I did verify that Bruce Grukak is the chief executive officer and chairman of the board of Peter Kiewit Sons Incorporated a Fortune 500 company. Kiewit is the fifth largest general contractor in the U.S., is privately owned and performs work throughout the U.S., Canada and Western Australia. Kiwit provides construction and engineering services to a variety of markets including building, mining, oil, gas and chemical, power, transportation, and water. Kali and on here. I need some help from the digging crew. I'm in a FEMA camp due to the campfire. The camp is located right above the Oroville Dam. There has been a lot of chatter about what is going on up there lately, so much so that the Butte County Sheriff's Office put out a reassurance notification on social media to let the public know he was keeping an eye on things. The message gave me a very bad feeling. I don't effing trust him. We got notifications from PG&D for three days previous to the fire. Now I'm wondering if these messages are advanced warning for those in the know of what's going to happen. Early evacuation for those individuals who understand. I have seen strange motion of equipment, such as entire parking lots of machinery and etc. being removed and lots cleared overnight. I think they are going to blow the dam. 
I started researching the Kiwit company who landed the contract to repair the dam. They are also a mining company. CEO is named Bruce Grucock anyway, Trump took a billion dollars away from California. Right before the campfire Trump had commented on not giving the money for the railway. I saw shit going down beforehand and I wish I would have realized then what I was seeing. I don't know how to dig too deep so any info would be much appreciated. They are going to need a big FF very soon to distract from their crimes. So we've really managed to keep Oroville Dam Watch Group uh, underground and on the down low for the most part, except for the people, you know, on YouTube. But we purposefully didn't have a Facebook page or a Twitter account. But we are launching our official Wackadoodle News YouTube channel this weekend. So you guys be sure to check that out. It is going to be awesome. We're going to be talking about UFOs and shadow people and all the stuff that you guys hear on, on Coast to Coast and all that. We're going to be talking about all of that on the Wackadoodle News. So that's That'll be really exciting. We felt it was time to take things to the next level, you know. What's going on guys, Black Scout Survival, and today we got a pretty cool video for you. This is, uh, I got a um, case of FEMA camp MREs the other day. These are the actual MREs they give out to FEMA camps and disaster relief type deals. And I've got two different menus. I got pasta fajoule, which is menu item 28. And then I've got uh, beef taco, which is menu item 39. The uh, box says that three of these a day for an adult, so breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If I'm looking at the pasta fajoule, the calorie count is 670, um, 60 carbs, 32 grams of protein, and the beef taco has 660 calories and 84 carbs with uh, 26 grams of protein. So a lot of carbs. But it comes in this clear bag, so you can kind of see quickly. I guess, you know, you don't know what, uh, religious beliefs or whatever the individuals are that you're you know maybe getting these so that's why they have them clear so they can quickly see what's in there um, this one actually doesn't even really look like any military type components in here I didn't really want that to happen that's why I was trying to be <laughs> careful because I didn't want to rip all open all right so you get animal crackers this is the pasta fajoule. You're gonna eat it cold, obviously. Beef, I think, maybe. Um, and then some roasted peanuts. And you get a little uh, spork, a napkin, and a straw. So that's all you really get on that one. Um, that looks like a, a really like a kiddie's meal there, right? This one here, the beef taco. That open a little bit better. This one looks like your standard military stuff. Beef taco, same ones you get in the military. No heating element in, in any of these. Cheese spread like you get in the military one as well. And then uh, this is, let's see what this is, I'm not really sure. Oh, it's a chocolate chip cookie. Extremely dry chocolate chip cookies. And the same accessory pack. So if you guys want people who know what they're talking about, I would definitely check out Scott and Lisa Cahill because they are damn experts. They really are. They know what they're talking about and uh, you can trust them. I consider them to be the voice of reason through all this because we're like more the conspiracy end and, you know, and then you know what the other end is. So anyway, God bless you guys. Have a great weekend. It's Marty D'Angelo, Oroville Dam Watch Group, over and out.